Okay, hi, so we're here at the, the Flytech stand. Um, I'm here with uh, Jörg Ewald and we're talking about the new products from Flytech. Um, there's a lot of excitement around Flytech because uh, everything was kind of going along and then suddenly there's this big pause, wait for it, here comes Jörg Ewald with the new range. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us about this much anticipated range that uh, you decided to just kind of hold everything until you were ready. Are yeah. you ready yet? No. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, no, the, the stand would look different if we were ready and we're really promoting that. Okay. But what I can tell you, yeah, then let's talk about this one first. Uh, you know, there was an announcement this spring for, for a new instrument. That was before I joined uh, yeah. Flytech. And I actually flew the very first prototype of that in, in May and I was not quite happy with it. So that's when I decided we have to stop. We didn't stop the development. Yeah. We stopped the pro promotion. promotion and yeah. taking orders and all that. Yeah. And we still continue developing it. Yeah. And this is the prototype as it looks now. Uh, it's not that big a difference if you fr from the outside. It's actually a little dusty by now. Uh, yeah, we added some color to it, but that's actually just for the show here. But inside, a lot of the things changed since uh, since spring. Uh, the electronics development is now almost done. Uh, I'd say 95% or even more. Uh, we finally found a screen that, that works for us. Uh, before it was all kind of yeah grayed out, milky, and now it's pretty crisp and clear. And we're still working on the software and we hope to release the first instrument in this range by the end of the year. So that's, that's, I think that's an important thing to notice. The way it was announced was as a new high-end instrument from, from Flytech, replacing the 6030. Yeah. But we will actually build a whole range of new instruments on the basis. So that, whatever was announced this spring is basically the grandfather of all that's to come. Uh, we we'll keep grandfather in his box and we bring the little ones out. Okay, so you're going to plan to start the range from the simpler version? Exactly. And then increase the functions exactly. through the year? Exactly, yeah. because we have to build up the software anyway. They yeah. will all run the same software. So we built the basic functionality right now. And as it evolves, we also evolve the hardware platform and that bigger, better, higher, hopefully higher resolution screens to it in the future. Very simply, it's a, it's kind of a mystery to all of us pilots. So we just see this green box. Mm -hmm. um, can you highlight what is the sort of function that this is going to provide mm -hmm. that the previous Flytex can't provide? Well, okay. What is the step forward? The big step forward is connectivity. That's the theme of the new range. It's all about connectivity. Uh, little side story. We get a, every now and then a pilot breaks their instrument have a crash or anything so they send us their instrument back in and we repair it most of these instruments still have the original firmware on it the one that it was yeah. delivered with six seven eight years ago so we decided this must be made simpler for pilots pilots obviously they don't find the time they don't know how to do it they don't manage to keep their instruments updated so all these will come with Wi-Fi and as soon as you connect it to the internet, it's gonna update, update itself. Yeah. If there's a new version of the firmware available, it will update itself. If there's new airspace information available for the area you're flying, it will update itself. Yeah. And who knows, maybe in the future, maybe in even uh, meteorological information. Just for the day, you will intend to go flying. Uh, you get that on your instrument right away. No TAMs and things like that. Exactly. Possible. All, yeah. all the data that right now you have to gather together Searchable, from 25 yeah. different sources. Yeah. We can do that gathering for you once, put it on our server and our instruments go and collect it from there the day when you go flying. And that's before the flight and after the flight, of course, uploading the, the, the track to wherever you want it, whichever server you want it. That's kind of a given. But yeah. It's about that connectivity. And then once we have that done in the basic instrument in, the, in that range, of course, live tracking will become an issue. And once you think about, yeah, now we're connected to the rest of the world also during the flight, that gives you even more possibilities to keep the pilot updated of what's going on. Yeah. We have airspaces in Switzerland that get activated 
sometime during the day they may get activated and then you have 30 minutes to leave it. So either you fly with an airband radio or you call them all the time or your instrument tells you, by the way, that airspace you're flying in right now, it's okay, but it will, it's activated now, ac yeah. half an hour from now you should be out. Or, hey, by the way, there's a big thunderstorm building up behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around. Turn yeah, around, around go yeah. away. Yeah. yeah, okay. But that, that'll be more, more the high-end instruments exactly. that can yeah. function down yeah. the line. Exactly. For the basic units, mm -hmm. um, with connectivity, mm -hmm. I presume then you're going to have you're going to have airspace. Will you have some kind of uh, mapping while you're flying um, that shows you the airspace that yeah, you're navigating? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we did... We, with regards to mapping, we did a lot of experiments and we found that th while these screens are still the ones that you can actually see best in the sunlight and while flying, uh, they're not suitable for topographic map information. Showing mountains and valleys doesn't work. Yeah. But what we can show is the graphic representation of all the airspaces, of course. That's been done a long time already and we can do that also. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, if you fly in a competition, all the turn points, everything, that's that's a given. We're thinking of adding major roads, rivers, towns, stuff like that to help you navigate. Just the topography, uh, yeah, yeah, doesn't really work. Yeah, it's yeah. just too many grayscales on the yeah. one screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, the the other range that you have, the, the element, seems mm -hmm. to be still kind of fulfilling the basic range exactly. of the, of the, of the I mean, flight tech coming up to this one. Exactly, that's the small range, the, or the, f the newest instrument in the small range. But before yeah. we always had a small and the, and the big range, and the top instrument in the small range uh, was the one, the, the smallest one with the GPS. And we decided to make an overhaul of that one. Uh, that will be, as you mentioned, the flight tech element. Okay. Is and this now the entry level one? From yeah, there will be one. The, some pilots just say I don't need a GPS, and that's okay. And we have an instrument in that range without a GPS, and then there's this one, the element with a GPS. And we're concentrating our efforts right now on this one because once you have it with the GPS, building one without GPS is kind of easy. <laughs> uh, what we change mainly from the outside is the keyboard. I mean, if you touch it, it's really different from all the keyboards we had before. It's uh, bumps. Yeah, yeah. it's really Tactile. it's bumpy, so you can actually feel it with your gloves on. You can operate it with your gloves on. Yeah. We changed the screen. We made the important pieces much bigger than they were before. Okay. We got rid of some things that are not that important. Uh, yeah, so that's mainly on the outside. We also changed the connectivity from mini USB Yay. to micro USB but <laughs> <laughs> and what that also entails is it's finally a mass storage device so you hook it up to any computer Mac Windows whatever and it just appears as a like a, like a USB drive like a USB stick yeah. you got files you operate with files so at the end of a flight you got a file you can open in Google Earth right away you have a file you upload to your online server right away. You want to get waypoints onto it, you take the waypoint file and you put it on the device, it's there. Super. It's easy as that. Yeah. It's no big step, I mean, uh, every photo camera, everything works like that. Yeah. The cool thing is, by adding that, we had to add another processor to the device. Because the processor that's originally in there, it just covers all the basic functionality. That one was completely full, we couldn't add anything to it. But by adding the second processor for the USB, we suddenly have, uh, yeah, processing power yeah, for more function. For more function. So yeah. we thought, what, what, what is it that pilots in this range, pilots who just start out doing cross-country flights, what is it they need most? And at least in Switzerland, but I also think in many other countries, uh, what they really want is to be sure that they stay clear of uh, airspaces. Our airspace situation in Switzerland is getting really complicated, complex, and pilots are getting to the point where they're afraid to fly away from their home site because they might do an airspace infringement. And to keep it as simple as possible for those pilots, we just tell them that's the direction to the nearest uh, airspace and that's how far you're away from it. So we don't do a graphical representation, it's simply 
hey, watch out, that's the direction. In that direction, there is one. And you're still two kilometers away, from, but watch out. Okay. So it's showing you the nearest airspace. One yeah. circling, whatever, yeah, saying exactly. over there, two kilometers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. How does it cope for, with that for uh, three dimensions? Because obviously uh, it's saying the nearest yeah. airspace is two kilometers, but... And yeah, we will it, also show underneath, underneath. underneath. How does it do that? Uh, it will give you an indication also here on the windrows that uh, you're underneath an airspace and it's 200 meters above you. We can do that. Yeah. Okay, but that's nice. It keeps it very simple. Yeah. That's uh, part of it. This level isn't having to look at a map and try and navigate yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's yeah, yeah. Just a I mean, I want pilots to fly and not to play video games. Yeah. It's as simple as that. That's kind of the theme that I try to put into all our instruments in the future. It's really, they're important to us because we built them, but most pilots, they should just experience flying and the, the instruments are just helpers, assistants. They're not center stage. They help you do whatever you want to do, fly high, fly long, fly far, but you shouldn't have to think about them all the time and operate them all the time. They're just there when you need them, but otherwise they're just very discreet in the background. Fantastic. When can we see this one on the shelves? The element, we're wrapping up development right now and it should get ready by the end of uh, October. Okay. So nice the Christmas, Christmas gift. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> And the other, other range? The new range, the still unnamed one. Actually, we have a name, but we will unveil it big time, of course. <laughs> uh, we hope to come out by the end of the year. So both of them will certainly be ready for the season next year, for spring. We'll, full production will be in full swing and everything will be ready. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, thanks a lot, Jörg. It's been really nice talking to you, finding yeah. out a little thanks bit more Thanks for your visit. Yeah. It's great, and we're uh, we're all looking forward to Christmas. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes.